Peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ is risen. He's risen from the dead. Amen. Um, this week our, our, our theme is See the Father's Love. I want to welcome everyone to Faith Lutheran Church at our 9 o'clock service here in Inglewood. The Father has done great things for us. And the best thing he did was send his only son to die for our sins. Amen. As God's children, we, we need to confess when we have sinned against God and when we have sinned against other people. And one of the main things as children of God, the things we do and the things we say should be a reflection of, of Jesus' word and of his sacrament. Our neighbors and our friends should know that we are God's children by the things we do to them, how we react to them, how we love them, how we forgive them. That is the greatest gift, is the forgiveness of all sins by Jesus' death on the cross. And in all that is because of his Father's love for us. So we are all saints and we are all children of God through our baptism, and through the repentance of all our sins. Amen? Amen. As we gather. Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? These are questions our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, asked of his disciples in another resurrection appearance after that first Easter morning. They are questions that could be asked of us numerous times in our daily lives as we face trouble and as we face doubts. Yet as Jesus kept on appearing, he kept on showing them himself. And more than that, he continued to teach and remind them that all was written was fulfilled in and through him. Though we cannot physically touch his hands and his side, each time we gather, Jesus continues to speak to us affirming his word, the word fulfilled, and the worth of humanity for whom he came. Amid troubles and doubts through Christ, we can see what kind of love the Father has given to us. Amen. Amen. Friends among one another, 
and more, we can often sense the motivation of love behind many forms of kindness and care. How can we know God's love for us? It is in some ways similar to our earthly relationships, but it's from one who always loves perfectly. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. The Lord speaks his word of unchanging truth, promise, and hope. He gives the action of sending his one and only son to this world to live, die, and be raised to life, that we may have a new and forgiven life in him. He gives the gift of his means and grace by claiming us as his own in baptism and providing Christ's body and blood for our forgiveness of sins and nourishment of faith. Unlike love shown in temporal earthly ways, his love is eternal and everlasting, and one we are blessed to see with eyes of faith and know in our hearts as we continue in this Easter season, rejoicing in the fact that Christ is risen. Amen.
See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. Gracious Lord, by your name, you have called us your own children, and we are to pray, praise, and give thanks to you. Yet we often choose not to see the love you have given us, and that we only face this world in the love of our we now will always live as you have called us to be the children of your We confess our sins to God in repentance, turning from those things that lead us away, turning back to you and the love you've shown. Let us take a moment of, re of silence to reflect upon our sins and confess our evil doings.
almighty and eternal God. You've assured us of the completion of our forgiveness and the new life in you through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. You call us your children through the waters of baptism and give us eyes to see your love for us in your only begotten Son. Give us the will to show forth in our lives the faith that we profess with our lips through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the God of Easter peace and joy fill you all with hope and love. Peace be with you. And also with you. Greet one another with the wave of peace.
hearts and minds of all people. Grant all your people the needs of body and life by the daily bread that you provide. And keep all from harm. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, of all care. Give comfort to those who face troubles in this life and their spiritual, emotional, and mental needs. Give healing according to your will for all those who are facing physical trials and tribulations. Lord, we pray for Faith Lutheran Church. We pray for Mimi Carmichael, Viola Gardner, June Chandler Enoch, Derek Chandler, Deborah Arnold, Rosie Watkins, Ole Owens, Welcome Carey, Ethel Parker, Troy and Sabrina Clemens, Juan Nelson and Family, Vicki Mills, Danny Mills Sr., Pastor Sleep, Linda Sleep, Chris White, William Rose Sr., Debbie Rose, Todd, Ed Perez, Emma Key, Debbie Thompson, John Green, Patsy Green, Anthony Foster Jr., Asia Rebellis, Peter Todd, Deron Williams, Gay Sandra Kimball, Leslie Davis, Stephanie Parker, and Sylvia Brock. Lord, we pray for all who are hospitalized and shut in. We pray for all families as you support them with this COVID-19 pandemic. Have mercy upon them and lead them on the path to health according to your will. To celebrate the birthday of Willie Gamble, we pray for all who are celebrating anniversaries. We pray for the shared ministries on our campus. We pray for all who travel that they arrive safely at their destination. We pray for our military and our college and our high school students, our preschool and our middle school students. Lord, we pray for the family of Vivian Marla Baines. Um, we pray for the family of Marlene McKay. The sister of Vivian passed away this week, Lord. Wrap your arms around them and bless them. Grant them compassion and consolation in the, in the blood that you provide. Great peace to all who mourn that Christ sees their victory will point beyond earthly death and the grave to the promises of sure forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of all provisions, look with favor upon our land and all in the glory that they lead with wisdom and compassion for all. Be with those who serve and defend us, defend us from harm and those who work to keep communities safe and in order. Bless all vocations that all will see their work for others as joyful service to you and your creation. Bring your spirit that, that our eyes always be open to see your love for us in Christ, through your word and means of grace. That as we live as your children, we love as you have first loved us, and come and witness and proclaim the Easter joy within us to all. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O oh Lord, we will be in all for whom we pray, trusting your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
We are self-conscious of the meager gifts that we bring. Therefore, we pray for a stronger faith, to give of ourselves and our protections more generously to those in need, and to support the resurrection ministry through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with our first reading. Peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. The first reading is recorded in Acts chapter 3, verses 11 through 21. Peter preaches salvation through Christ. While they clung to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astounded, ran together, together to them in the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one, and ask for a murderer to be granted to you. And you kill the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man his perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our song of the day. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. O oh, man, how long shall my honor be turned into shame? How long will your love be for But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Honor in your own hearts on your own bed and be silent. Offer right sacrifices. And put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, the will shall show us good. Lift up your light from the face upon the Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have with the grain, with their grain and wine the mouth. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. We continue with our music ministry. Brother Stephen Green. Jesus, the light of the world. 
of the Lord be with you. And also with you. The epistle is recorded in 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. We are God's children now. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But what we know that when we, he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus holds in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our lesson for today is uh, from our epistle reading, 1 John chapter 3. And, and John does a very good descriptive reading today. And he describes what the life of a saint is like. And that is us. As John calls us as saints, we are children of God. How wonderful that is. Mm. What kind of love is this, John asks. What kind of father would do what our Heavenly Father has done for us? Only he can do that. Only he will do that. All other love falls short of our Father's love. Who we who are not his children at one time, but he adopted us. He adopted us into the church family. Now, as children, we were not good children. We were bad. We would tear up the house. We would talk bad. We were rebellious. They need to wash our mouth out with soap. We are constantly getting in trouble. We say hurtful, hateful things, and we do hurtful things. Who would adopt children like that? <laughs> Only God. Only God. Only our Father in heaven would adopt us. If we had a social worker in charge of us, they would abandon us. They couldn't find a family to take us. What foster home would it take these bad, rebellious, foul mouth kids? But thank God, God the Father is unlike any earthly parent. When we see the best in our parents, when we see they are setting a good example, we are catching a glimpse of the boundless love that our Father in Heaven has for us. God, our Father, selected us out of pure grace. His undeserved love did not wait for us to become lovable. He decided that. He would invest his love in us and make us his own. And in time, his love would transform us into something lovable. That's what our baptism does for us transforms us into something lovable. Our Father, that is the type of love that the Father has for us. And this is what he has done. He's loved us in a very specific way. He gave his only begotten Son that whoever, even us bad kids, whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. His Son, was the perfect child in every way. Yet the Father was willing to sacrifice his only son for us. Was that a good trade? He exchanged his son for us. That exchange of the very best child for a bunch of self-serving children. But that is exactly the kind of love that our Father has for us. Now, we are adopted children, so he calls us his children. We are perfect in his eyes. He not only calls us his children, but that's what we really are. We all are children of God. But that leads to problems. For instance, sometimes we wonder, since the Father loves us so much, why do we suffer? Why do we have trials and tribulations? Why is there so much treatment in this earthly walk that we go through? And the answer is very simple. The world does not know us any more than it knows God. The world does not know us so it, because it does not know Him. That is where the disconnect comes into place. But we were once like them. We were lost in sin. We were rebellious. But now the Father has adopted us as his children. We are extremely different today. 
today. Now that we are adopted. At first glance, we do not appear different to people in the world. But it is because of our Father's love. We are now a different species. We are a new creation in Christ. This sinful world is picking up on the fact that we are beginning to see the results of the separation between our new nature and the nature of the sinful world. Friction and hostility, those things are going to happen. But we are the reflection of the Father's love and what it has done for us and what it has done to us. They do not know us. So how can they understand us? We are strange and we are unfamiliar to them. That makes it easier to understand the increasing power that is put upon us, the saints. We have a lot of responsibility as children of God. In the end, it is our hidden nature as God's children that needs to become visible. Because we are His children, we are to let people know that we are His children. What we will be is still to be revealed. The wait is for the day when Christ appears to just the world. He will appear in glory brighter than the sun, with his splendor and his holiness visible for everyone to see. And it is because of our Father's love we get to be like him. We will shine out in majesty. We will look like the children of God. We will look like we should look, not like this present, clumsy, weeping, fatherless, sinful world that we are going through. Jesus come, we will be perfect. We will be like Christ. We will not be God, but we will be in the image of our Father. We will be worthy of the title that he has called us. We have the title of children of God. Mm -hmm. Then he will see him and he will see us. We will gaze upon the face of God in all glory. We ourselves cannot do that. Our impurity prevents us from doing that. But we have our Father's love. And it was made complete in the death and resurrection of His Son. The Father's love is applied to us in our baptism. And we become His children. The Father's love is in the Word and in its sacrament. It is what sets us apart from doing His will. And His will is to love our name. That is the kind of love that the Father has given to us. What do we do with that love? What do we do with the love that the Father has given to us? We love our neighbor. By baptism, we've been cleansed. We are immaculate so that the least stain or blemish remains of us. It is taken up by God. We are righteous in the eyes of the Lord. We will gaze upon the face of our Creator and our Redeemer. That is our hope and that is our destiny to be purified on the last day. Then we also work to purify ourselves in this life. That is the struggle we're going through now. How do we be pure in this earthly walk? Sin. Death, the devil, they are doing their job. We have a father to take care of that. Jesus came to overcome sin, death, and the power of the devil. That is why he came. That is why he is our big brother. Also, it is the one father who does a lot of the work for us. Every good thing is done through the work of the Holy Spirit. Every impulse to purify ourselves comes from the Lord. We cannot do it on our own. We cannot get things done separated from Jesus Christ. We do have to apply ourselves to the task at hand. We cannot ignore our actions and say, Oh, well, God will take care of it. Mm -hmm. That's a weak excuse.
priesthoods. All of us who are purified and who are destined for purity must continue to work to purify ourselves. Not that we can earn any extra benefits from it. Matter of fact, far from it. Hmm. Instead, it is our working that reveals that we are children of God. How can his children do anything else? We are his. So naturally, he wants us to do his will. Be aware of our sins. Be aware of the temptations that will come across us daily. We do not want to fall back into our old, sinful, selfish ways. We have to keep trying. We are trying to imitate our Father. We are trying to be like Christ, our Redeemer. Even knowing that we cannot fully succeed, we are to continue to try to do better. Let's just be better every day. We cannot give up and we cannot give in to sin. Our hope is in Christ. Our hope of glory comes to pass. Do not forget to keep to purify ourselves in the Word. Even though the world will try to distract us, the world will try to convince us that they do not want us to be children of God. The Father sets us apart from the world. The world does not know us because it does not know Him. We no longer find our identity of things of this perished world. But by virtue of our baptism, we bear our Heavenly Father's name. That is where our identity now lies. We are his children. We no longer live our lives seeking to fulfill the desires of the earthly heart, like Jesus who sets us free. Our desire now is to do the Father's will. And what is the Father's will? His will is to continue to love the world through his Son. And this love is made possible the word and the preaching and the sacraments of our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As God's children, we are quick to confess when we have sinned against God and other people. We need to do that. We need to be quick to confess our sins. We need to be quick to repent when we've done it wrong. We need to be quick to turn our lives around and give them back to God. We do this because we understand that God's great love caused Jesus to die. We love others because God in Christ first loved us, but he continues to love us. This is the miracle of Easter. It is the cross. God's love, God's grace that Jesus came to die and then be raised. It takes us the hopeless sinner gives us hope. And that hope is in his love. This is the kind of love that the Father has for us. We need to keep on focusing. We need to stay current. We need to understand that he loves us. And we are to call him our Father. Even though we are still a sinner, for his sake, his son is pleased. Our Father is pleased to call us his children. He is pleased to call us his child. It is the best love in the world. It is a love given to us in baptism. It is a love that cleanses our hearts, that cleanses our mind, that cleanses our soul. We are to love because we were first love. All these blessings we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all our human understanding. Guard our hearts and minds in Christ's everlasting.
dear sisters in Christ. You have been elected to fulfill positions of responsibility in the Lutheran Twenty Missionary Society, an auxiliary of this congregation. Hear what the Apostle Paul says. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to this, each one of the manifestations of the Spirit is given for the common good. In the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the office entrusted to you? And do you promise to faithfully carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the evangelical Lutheran church? If so, answer, I do. The Almighty and most merciful God, our Heavenly Father, enlighten and serve you in your office that you may be good and faithful stewards of the glory of his name and the good of his people. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, visit, we pray, this congregation and these new officers with your love and favor. Enlighten their minds with the light of your gospel. Place in their hearts a love of the truth and increase them in true faith. Nourish them with your goodness and of your great mercy. Keep them in your love through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. May I present to you your LWML officers. We have President Mary Anderson, Vice President Val Murphy, Recording Secretary. Ruth Wiggins, and Treasurer, Regina Jimson. Go in the peace of the Lord, the Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless you and preserve you. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you to help you.
and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praise you and say.
made us remember all that you have done for us before we were born. To realize that you are with us today. And to await your promised return one day to receive us into your eternal kingdom. So remember us in your kingdom now and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.